let's quickly revisit file management. So what we're going to look at is four main topics. We're going to look at naming, we're going to look at storage, backup, and also access. So let's start off with naming. So when it comes to naming, you've got a whole lot of different naming conventions, but I'm going to go through four of the more popular ones. You can see up here that camel case starts lowercase, but the second and every subsequent word starts with a capital letter. And it's very good because it's continuous. It has no spaces in it, uh, but it can be easily read because of those capitals. Pascal case is very similar. I imagine it's named after the language Pascal, if I haven't checked. And every word, the first letter and the first letter of every other word, again, no spaces, and that's Pascal case. And then there is snake case, where instead of spaces, you use an underscore, and you don't have to use capital letters. I've seen people use it with capital letters, but you do also see it all in lowercase. And then, of course, you have Hungarian case, where you've actually got a prefix on the start, which indicates what the file type is of that variable name or file name. Uh, so these are things to keep in mind when you're doing your file management, is having a consistent naming system. Uh, you also see some organisations have things like the name of the project and the author and the month and so forth. Uh, I've seen that in theory. I've never actually seen anyone do it in practice, but I'm sure that there are people who do. But anyhow, it's good to have a consistent file naming pattern. When it comes to storage, you can store files, obviously, on your hard drive, uh, which still a lot of people do, uh, where it's actually in your machine. That's called locally. Uh, and you can back it up and stuff in that environment too onto other hard disks, portable storage. Or you can store it remotely, so it can be on a hard disk or a server somewhere else. And sometimes that's good in case of natural emergency and so forth. And there are dedicated places that can do this sort of backing up and storage for you. And of course you can store things in the cloud, which I have to say is what I do. Um, so that whether I'm at home or at work, I can get to those files and work on them just the same. Although it has to be said that when you're doing stuff in the cloud, you are sacrificing some of your autonomy um, because you are letting somebody else control your files. And for me, that's fine, but it's certainly a trade-off. So a similar issue is to do with backing up. Now, backing up is different to storage. So we have our main store, but ideally critical files will be kept in a backup, which is a second set of it. So, you know, your hard drive is not is not your, is your storage, but you would need to have it backed up to somewhere else as well. And likewise, um, a lot of cloud services do the backing up for you. But again, you've only got it in one place then. Uh, and when it comes to backup, there are two types of backup. One is to just copy everything across, which is a full backup. And the second thing that you can do is what's called an incremental backup. And this is more efficient of your network bandwidth, where you just go through and identify the files that have been changed since the last backup. And then it just copies the updated files. And that's obviously much more efficient on your network resources. Uh, finally, in terms of file management, particularly if you're working on a project, um, it's good to manage who's got access to what. So, you know, the, um, this, this part of the team would have access to these files. And often this is done on a user basis or in terms of groups of users. So you'll be given permission to be a developer or a tester or all sorts of things, which will mean you've only got access to what you need to have access to. And that protects you from, well, for one, industrial espionage a bit. Nothing fully protects you. But it also protects you from people meddling in stuff that they don't understand and only having access to the stuff that they're meant to. Um, yeah, so there are your three things to think about in terms of file management, being naming, storage, backup, and it wasn't three, it was four, and the fourth being access.